and amen. Now let's open our Bibles in the book of uh, Philippians, where we are continuing our series. Uh, so let's read it. And there's four things that I want to talk to you guys about here. And so it says the following. Get my phone out. I just don't like to go over my time. Okay. So it says the following. We are in chapter 1, verse 1. And it says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi. I'm going to read it again. To, I'm going to make it relevant to us, okay? To, God, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus in Ocean Beach. Okay? To all God's holy people, holy people in Ocean Beach. That's how he calls us. We'll talk about that. And together with overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is writing to the church of Philippi saying, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. And that's why the Philippians is the book of joy. Paul talks a lot about joy in this book. And then in verse 5 it says, I praise God because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, the first thing that God highlighted to me, that it's the way that God talks to us. He talks to us and he says, to the saints of ch in the church of Ocean Beach, to God's holy people in the church of Ocean Beach. This is so key for us to get it, church. He's talking about identity. That God no longer defines us by our past, by our past mistakes. He doesn't define us that way. He defines us as sons and daughters, full-on forgiven, full-on. The Bible says that our forgiveness is so complete that we are, in God's eyes, we are white as snow. And, and the Bible says that God says that I'm going to remove move your sin so far from you as the east is from the west to the point that I will remember them no more. How good news, how much of a good news is this church? I hope that in your heart the joy starts to bubble right now. That it's like, man, God sees me and he identifies me according to Holy, forgiven, white as snow. And this is good news because if, if I tell you like that you're a loser, you're going to live life as a loser. You know what I'm saying? If, if your parents are saying to you, oh, you're never going to amount to anything and you believe that, you're going to live life not expecting to amount to anything. But if God Almighty God is trying to overwrite the way people identified you and maybe the way that you have been identifying you and he's identifying you in a new way that in Christ Jesus he sees you as holy, forgiven, white as snow, as sons and daughters of the Almighty living God. How good news is that, church? Yeah, you can clap. If it's for God, let's do it right. Clap for God. When you clap, you don't have to feel comfortable because you ask my, well, my wife, there's nothing special about me, and I know it. So when you clap, it, I know you're clapping to somebody that is amazing, okay? So awkwardness, I hope, is gone. I'm not going like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it was awesome, yeah. Uh, he defines you as, as that way. And this is so key because when you're going to relate to someone, identity is key. If you're going to identify, if, if, you're, if you see yourself, I'm like, I can never go in the presence of God because I have this and this and this and this against me. There's no way a person like me can go in the presence of God. But God is saying, man, you're white as snow, completely forgiven. That's why he says you can come boldly, boldly to my presence. 
You can come boldly as sons and daughters do it. And they sometimes they don't knock at our door, right? You try putting kids in bed when they're three. They just keep coming back, right? They come boldly to the room, you know? And, and we can boldly come to the throne of God because we're, we're family now, church. Not only us, we're family. We're, he's our father. We're brothers from a different mother, but the same father. And so the identity is everything, and I hope you get this. Because if you're stuck on your past, you're always going guilt and shame that is dragging you like a backpack of rocks. And you're feeling guilty of coming to the presence of God. God, you know, I know I have this backpack right here. I hope you don't see it. Am I hiding? It's camouflaged. I hope you don't see it. But when you know that how huge is his forgiveness and the backpack is completely gone, we're white as snow, and there's this mystery in the Bible that we don't get that. We are in Christ, and Christ is in us. How can you understand that? I mean, in Christ. And so asking my, my seminary professor, I asked him, can you explain me these things that we are in Christ and he is in us? Okay, he's like... Christ being in us is easy. It's, it's the Holy Spirit is, is in us. At the moment of salvation, at the moment that we surrender our lives to God, the Holy Spirit comes in us. But how about me being in Christ? Because it's almost like in every page of the Bible. He told us, he said, look at this, Julian. This is you. At the moment of your salvation, you are in Christ. And when God looks at you, he sees Christ. That's a mystery. Don't try to understand it. It's bigger than our little noodle that we have up here. And so we are in Christ and he is in us. And because we are in him, now the way God sees us, he sees us as holy. Yeah. That's weird, right? But it's real. That in Christ, we are holy. And so holiness, and I'm like, God, this is good, but I need some more help explaining this to the church. You know, getting is, is one thing, church. Explaining is a different thing. Uh, you know, so com the art of communication is, is it's hard. And I'm like, God, I get this, but how can I better explain this to the church? He's like, Julian, it's like this. It's like being married, okay? At the moment that you get married, you're just married. You are married. Your identity changed. You went from single to married in a yes I do split second when you come to me and anybody that comes to me by faith I will never reject them I will adopt and I will forgive them and at that very moment boom I forgive them I adopt them and they are mine and I am his and they become holy in my eyes identity is completely changed I'm like yes God I get it but now we are holy but what about the process of holiness? Because there is also the process of us growing to grow in obedience. You know what I'm saying? We come, we come to God. We're doing like, I don't know about you. I was doing everything wrong. And then I'm like, you saved. Okay, boom, boom. I'm his, his mine. Okay, but now I have to learn to walk out this holiness. So it is my identity, but it's also a process that we need to grow in. To grow in holiness if you're taking notes. Just like, and God's like, he, he continues, you know, the download continues. He's like, Julian, it's just like a married person. If he never gets married, he will never be able to grow as a married person. A person that's never declared holy by me will never be able to grow in the holiness. I hope that's all making sense. It's, it's, it's hard explaining this stuff, church. Thank you, Melissa. I, I paid her. I paid her to say that. <laughs> She's the secret shopper, you know. <laughs> As we get married, let me unconfuse you from now on. I hope I, I hope I can do this job. But pastor, I'm holy. I know my past. See, so you're going to your past again. You're trying to define yourself by your past. I know because I know I've done this, I've done this, and, and I still have the temptation to do that. And I say, then you're talking about temptation. So you, we go to our past and we go to our temptations. God, He buried your past 
in a sea of forgetfulness. He got your past and he says, as far as the east is from the west, I'm going to get all your bad stuff. I'm going to throw it so far into eternity that I will ne not be able to remember no more and I will never use that against you. And now we are fully identity. Okay, I get who I am in God. He's a good God and I'm forgiven. And now we are equipped by God to grow in holiness. Now we have the Holy Spirit in us that says there's nothing impossible to God. And through my power, you will have victory over all your temptations. And you heard me right. You, in Christ Jesus, you can believe from the bottom of your heart. I will have victory over all my temptations in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? I believe it. I believe it. I believe God is so much bigger than my temptations, church. It's not even, it's not even close. It's like, I'm tempted to do this. God's like, nah, uh uh don't do it. He starts talking to us, right? And I'm like, okay, God, I know I should not do it. Can you help me? And he's like, sure. And then he gives us the strength of the Holy Spirit to say no to the evil desires we all have, to say yes to obedience to him. And as we do that, we're growing in our new identity. We're growing in holiness. Are you following me, church? And so this is key. This is key. Who God is and who am I? His identity. He's a good God. My identity. I am, I am holy to the holy people in Ocean Beach. That's how he defines you. And then he gives you the Holy Spirit. And he's going to equip you to have victory in all of your temptations. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Because it's possible, church. Don't confuse. Some Christians confuse being tempted with sinning. And it's so different, church. They, they, they go like, they come to me and say, Pastor, because you don't know. God cut me off on the freeway. You don't know what I felt like doing right here. I felt like pulling over and throwing rocks at the car, giving fingers and spitting. And I'm like, oh, cool, all right. That's called temptation. Even Jesus was tempted. Check this out. I'm ready to blow your mind. Find it in your Bible. The Bible says he was tempted in every way that we are tempted. And that's why we have a high priest who understands. So he... Can you imagine Jesus having all those thoughts too? Like, I'm going to give the finger. I'm going to throw rocks. I'm going to, where's my baseball bat? That's what the Bible is saying. He was tempted in every way like, like we are. Then I'm like, okay, that's temptation. But what did you, did, you, did you do with that temptation? Oh, I didn't do anything, you know. I just said, no, don't do that. Yes! Some people get stuck on the temptation. Think I'm horrible. I'm bad. I did this. No, no, no. It's the and it's when we give the temptation arms and legs and a mouth. That's when the temptation wins and, and, and the Holy Spirit loses. Are you following me? Okay. So we are holy and we need to grow in this holiness. But we are fully equipped by the Holy Spirit to say no to our temptations and say yes to God. Is it hard? Yes, it is hard. It is hard because we're human beings. We think we have rights. I have the total right right now to I don't want to throw rocks and throw fingers because the freedom of speech, you know. I'm going to say stuff right now. But no, it's different. It's like, uh, yes, I have all these desires, but I don't want to live according to the flesh. I want to live according to the spirit. I do not want to gratify the desires of my, my flesh, but I want to say yes to God and his ways. You know what? Because God's ways is higher than our ways, church. His ways come with peace and joy, and it comes with that sense of like, good and faithful servant. Good job. I saw the temptation that you're going through, but I saw that you prayed. I saw that you remind, just reminded yourself of the Bible. I saw you praying. I saw you saying no to that temptation. Good job. And so here's the good news that I hope it gives you joy. You can take it to the bank. In Christ Jesus, I will have victory. You can say that to yourself. I will have victory over all my temptations and sins. 
you can take that to the bank. I hope you are following me now. Now, so uh, holiness is an identity, but it's also a process. It's an identity. Holiness, it's an identity, but it's also a process that will take for the rest of our lives on this side of heaven because in, in the flesh, we'll be tempted, but the good news is that we have Christ in us and he equips us for victory. Now, uh, the second thing that I saw in this passage was, I'm going to read verse uh, 3 right here, 3 and 4. It says, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Second thing here is that when Paul says, I'm so joyful because I'm in prison. Paul was in prison writing this letter. He's like, I'm in prison, but you know what? The gospel continues to go forward. Why? Because church in Ocean Beach, we are partners in the gospel. Even if I'm not here, he's saying, I, I know that you guys are continuing the work of God on planet Earth. What is he doing? Think about this. God, when we receive the Holy Spirit of God, it comes with a badge. And the badge says pretty much a rep of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That we represent God on earth. And the enemy is going to try to attack your identity. And he tries to attack my identity so that we don't represent God. He wants us to live in guilt and shame and stuck in our past. But the way we, we got to respond to him is the following. He goes like, what qualifies you to being a representative of God? What? God does. He does. The Holy Spirit does. That, that's it. That's it. The Holy Spirit is in me. And now I am, I'm here to tell you here, you are 100% qualified and 100% certified to start loving people as Christ loves you, to start helping people as he helps you, start comforting people as he comforts you. You are 100% certified and qualified if you have Christ in you and the Holy Spirit in you, 100%. What qualifies you? The voices in our mind go like, what qualifies you? I can't believe you're going to do that. I'm qualified by God. Oh, really? Are you sure? I'm positive the Holy Spirit is in me. I am a new creation. I am now a minister. I am now a high priest. And that's what the Bible says that every Christian is. That you are, repeat in your mind, repeat in your mind. I'm going to trip you. I'm going to trip you now for a minute. Say, I am a priest. That's a trip. Sorry, I interrupted. Let's try this again. Say, I am a priest. I am a representative of God on earth. I am his holy people. I can love with his love. I can comfort with his comfort. Don't have to repeat now. That's who you are. Paul can be in prison. Billy Graham just died. Whatever, whatever is not here in San Diego. Guess what? God has you. He's got you, and he's sending us to represent him wherever we go. You don't have to feel so inadequate. You are 100% adequate, if you're in Christ, to represent him, 100% adequate. Remove all the awkwardness. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to say. It, let me, uh, it happens a lot, and I'm ho I hope I can break this at least a little bit today. When people are going through needs around us at the workplace or uh, family or place of hobby, you know, we feel so inadequate and so ill-equipped to do anything that if we're honest, we're like, oh, Susie just lost her husband? Okay. We don't do that because we're evil or mean. Maybe people did that to you and you're like, oh, I can't believe people did that. Little by little we go like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. That's too big for me. You know what I'm talking about? We're like, man, really? He just died. I got a car accident and died. Man, I don't know. What am I going to say to Susie? What are the words? Let me, let me tell you something. Yes, exactly. What am I going to say? You don't have to say anything. So let me, let me teach you how to represent, represent God when people are going through hardships. You go. You listen. 
You love. You go towards the hurting, like Jesus did. You give him a hug, if you have that relationship. You just say, I'm here for you. Anything you need, just call me. That's hospital visit 101, church. You just go there, and you you show up. I've been to hundreds of of, of hospital visits. It's like, people are like, thank you for being here. I I haven't said anything. I I just showed up. So we go go towards the people. We're 100% certified, 100% equipped, 100% ready by God. And then we just go to those people, and we just approach him. And we just don't have to feel so ill-equipped and inadequate. We just go, and I'm here for you, whatever you need. And then, oh, that would be awesome if you can come to, let's say, to the hospital to visit my sister, you know. All right, let's do that. And that's going to put you on your knees. You're going to be nervous in a good way. You're like, I don't know, I've never done this before. And you're like full-on leaning on the Holy Spirit to do that. It's like you're parking the car. The enemy's like, don't do it. Don't do it. Remember your past. Remember this. Remember that. You're like, shut up in Jesus' name. I'm a holy priest. <laughs> Serious, church. I promise you. It's like you get there. All parking is going to cost $4. I don't know if I have that. You, 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 do it. Do it. Do it. And then you get there, you just don't know what to do. Don't do anything. Show up, hold hands with them. They, they touch, touch, love, comfort. And if they like, you can pray for them. And from my experience, 99.9% of the time, people will take prayer. And so, so listen, listen, love, love, and be there, be there. And so I, I hope I'm, I'm equipping you a little bit to, to really to represent God. Wherever we go. I, I was in a situation, uh, I want to say maybe two years ago. There's this place that I surf. There's a lot of locals. And, and they're not always nice, to say the least, you know. And they, uh, one of them got hurt really bad, surfing really bad. I promise you. I'm, I'm, I was far away. I'm going to surf. He's coming out of the water. He can't walk. He's just like, like this. Like something happened. I, it's major. I can't even walk. I saw one person passing by. Another person passing by, another person passing by, another getting out of the water, friends, another one getting out of the water, friends, another one getting water. For, I, I was not his friend. I was not. I'm like, dude, waves are pumping. I really want to be out there. But now I see a need. And that's why Jesus said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. I'm going to make you a golfer for people. I'm going to make you a gym person, a working out for people. Me, he said, I'm going to make you a surfer for people. And so I, I'm there, and I'm like, I, this guy's heavier than me. I'm like, I put him on, I'm like that. Like, if you're a military, you know what I'm talking about. You're helping someone. And you're like, dude, I, my legs are not going anywhere. And I just I started praying with the guy. I'm like, God, Holy Spirit of God, just touch him and bless him and heal them in Jesus' name. And, and really... What a privilege we have, church. We are, we're just moving towards the, the hurting. We're moving towards, and we can give. What can we give? We can give what God has given to us. And the Bible says that we've been equipped with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. That we're complete spiritually in Christ. And so that's the second thing. We are representatives of God on this planet. So just take steps and start paying attention. Your job, your job, your place of hobby is not just about the paycheck or whatever. Those are good too. We need that. And the hobby is not just about, it's, it's about the people too that are there. What do you want me to do here today? What, who do you want me to help here today, God? And God's going to start bringing those opportunities. And Paul is happy. He's like, man, I'm in prison. But you know what? There's a partnership here. OB, Claremont, they're going to be fine. Why? Because there's some holy people right here, fully equipped, fully certified by God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And they are going to move the kingdom of God forward even when Paul are in chains. Are you following me, church? So in other words, think about we are with linked arms with Jesus, Paul, and Peter. We're just continuing the work of God here on planet Earth. So he's rejoicing because they are partners in the gospel. Now, the third thing I saw here was this one thing. Verse 6, Paul says, being confident. 
of this. That God, who began a good work in you, will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I am confident. And then it talks about a promise. I am confident in the promises of God. Our source of confidence, church, is in God, and it's in the promises of God. And arrogance, we know, is bad, but confidence is good. And God wants us to be confident, not in ourselves. But he wants us to be confident in him and in the promises that he's got for us. I'll give an example. God, I'm going to this hospital visit. I have no, I have no idea what I'm going to do, what I'm going to say. But Father God, the Bible says that you will remind us of what to do and what to say. You see? Did you get that? Where my confidence to go to the hospital was that God will put stuff in my mind to, to be, to do, to say, that he will remind me of what to do, what to say. Have you seen this? My confidence, I'm going through a hard time, and me may be going through a hard time. We're not going like, oh, you know, wishful thinking. My confidence is, God, that even if I walk through the valley of shadow of death, think about this place for a minute. It's the valley and the shadow of death. Okay? Dark place. Hardship. Even if I walk to the valley, that, that death is right there, that the shadow is being, you know, casting on me. Even if I walk to the valley of shadow of God, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. You see how we face hardships? Not in our arrogance, but in the confidence of God, of his promises that he is with us. Are you with me, church? Our confidence is in his promises. Sometimes we're tired of doing something good. We do something good and we do something good and we do something good. We do something good and we don't see it. It's not coming back to us. It's not being reciprocated. It's, uh, that's a hard one. You got it. Anyways, I'm not going <laughs> to make that mistake twice. <laughs> Once is enough. And then we feel like I'm going to give up. I'll give you an example. I was surfing Saturday and, and there was three, three people in the ocean. And if you don't surf, there is a line, okay? There is a line, and you just, the person catches a wave, and then you, you move up, and the other person catches a wave, you move up. It, it's kind of like that. It looks like it's full-on chaos right there, but it's not. And then it was my time to catch the wave. I, I caught a wave. And then that happened like two or three times. And then it was my turn, and those other two guys wanted to cut me off. They're like, blah, 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 blah. They wanted to be first in line. I'm like, dude, what's up? So that's, that's in my heart, Okay. I'm like, that's so disrespectful. There's only three people in the ocean right now. You just caught a wave. Can't you just wait and let me catch mine? And then, and then they did that once, and they did that twice. And, they, and I'm like, oh, no. I'm, I'm not going to respect them too. Okay? Call temptation. I'm not going to respect them. They're not respecting me. And then God, the Holy Spirit of God, he's awesome. He's like, do not grow tired in doing good. Because in due season, you will reap a harvest. I'm like, oh, that's good, God. That's good. And so I continued to serve with two jerks. <laughs> and through the power of the Holy Spirit, I caught some waves, and they tried to be disrespectful to me over and over and over again. And who I was, I was not doing what they deserve. They deserve a jerk also. But I was doing it for the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Lord Jesus Christ, he gave me the strength to do it. And he's going to do the same thing for us. Why? Because we are confident in the promises of God. God, I am confident that if I don't grow tired in doing what's good, if I don't give up doing what's right in your eyes, in the right season, you will bless me even when we are fed up. Are you fed up here today? I'm here to tell you, don't grow tired in doing what's good. You're doing for the Lord and he's faithful. In right season, he will bless you. Even if it's not in that area of life, in another area of life, you are doing for him. If you're doing for people, you're, we're all going to be disappointed. But do it for the Lord. That's the only one that never disappoints. Amen, church? Amen. 
So don't grow tired. And so our confidence comes from God and the promises of God. All things work together for the good of those who love God. I love God. So everything that's coming my way, this may be a bad thing. Yes, this may be a bad season. This may be a bad situation. But I believe that you're using this, you're using that, and together it's going to be a puzzle, God. That I'm not seeing all the pieces here, but you're making a beautiful puzzle because you are a beautiful God. And every good gift comes from above. And you're a good God. You, have enjoy, you, you enjoy blessing us. You have good plans for us. I, I go with you from glory to glory. So yes, it is a bad season, but this will work out because he is in charge. You see? Our confidence is not in a cookie. What is it? The cookie? You know, the Chinese cookie thing? Uh, our confidence is in the promises of God. When I pray for you, church, when I pray for my kids, you know what I do? Almost daily. I'm not going to say daily because sometimes I forget. Almost daily I pray, God, send angels in every single one of their homes Send angels around every single individual. Send angels around in being their marriage. I pray that they will have a blessed night, that angels will pr protect their windows and doors. God, and, I, and see, I didn't get that from a comic book, church. I got that because the Bible says that when we pray, God will send messengers to those that will inherit salvation. So my confidence that he is sending angels to your home and to your kids. I am 100% sure that angels are around you and around your kids. And as you pray too, God will send them too. And so let's start employing some angels, church. Yeah. All right? Our confidence. Is in your faithfulness, our confidence, in your promises. It's not only a song, church. It's confident. I am confident in this one promise. And that's the promise I, I want to finish with. He says, he who started the good work in you will be with you to the day you die and more. I will crush the enemy today in Jesus' name. Some of you are afraid that God is leaving you. Sometimes God has left you or, or that. I've, I literally heard people saying, Pastor, I don't know if I'm going to make it to heaven. I'm like, are you saved? Did you give your life to God? Yes, I did. Did you repent of your sins and put your faith in, faith in Christ? Yes, I did that. And now, but he's like, what if I told a lie, Pastor, in the la and, and, a, and a bus hits me right at the moment that I told a lie? I think I'm going to end up in hell. I'm like, that doesn't match what the Bible says. What the Bible says is the, is the following. He who began the good work, God, in you, will be with you till completion. I will never leave you, will never. Think about the words, all inclusive. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Nothing, all inclusive, nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So we have to hold on to this promise. Again, it will be a source of joy. That's like, man, God is with me till the day I die and then go to him to spend eternity with him. So that's a source of confidence. God is with me. Is that arrogance? No, it's confidence. It's the truth. Amen. So I'll, I'll conclude and then we'll pray. In Christ Jesus, we are holy 100% forgiven in him. He sees us as white as snow. And he has equipped us with the Holy Spirit to grow in holiness. And that is to say no to all the temptations that are evil and bad. And then we are equipped to have full-on victory in life through his power. We're all representatives of God here on earth. Because there's a partnership now between us and God. We are God's reps on earth. Our source of confidence 
It's not because we're good looking, because in 50 years we will not be good looking, okay? Our source of confidence cannot be in our diploma, it cannot be on this, it cannot be in that, in our last names. In our, our source of confidence are in the promise of God, in his faithfulness, and in his goodness. Then we can be, you know, just walking in confidence, boldly, but not arrogance, because that's, that's different, and you know the difference. And last but not least, he who began the good work with you, God will never, ever, 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 ever abandon you in Christ Jesus. He never did and he never will. He's going to bring it to completion in Jesus' name. Okay? If you don't understand it, just read the Bible because oh, my, my guilt, my shame. Anyways, let's pray. God's so good.